I'm an indie filmmaker in Columbus, Ohio. I made the documentary Social Media Monster that follows an internet troll. I got a civil stalking protection order, he has warrants for his arrest, and he's still harassing me and others. This is another update on how a cyber predator continues to stop our film from being released. Matthew Burdick was successful in getting Social Media Monster removed from Amazon Prime, my distributor, and getting all of my streaming contracts canceled. Matthew has always wanted to paint this as a Batman v Joker, a mano a mano, just two guys fighting on the internet. And that simply is not true. Effectively, Matthew has silenced the voice of all of his victims. Matthew claims he has no victims. Uh, why does Matthew Burdick have 300 victims? Is the question that's being asked publicly. And so the facts are, I don't have 300 victims. During March 2024, Matthew Burdick attacked myself and another female victim based in the UK with disgusting acts of false accusations, harassment and threats. Matthew Burdick claimed he was going to hunt me down. Matthew Burdick contacted the owner of my talent agency and tried to have me removed from their roster and fired. Matthew Burdick threatened me with multiple lawsuits and threatened to lure me out into the woods to teach me a lesson. Matthew Burdick made my life a living hell by sending his terroristic emails to my family, my friends, and even my past and current employer. Matthew Burdick threatened to have me beat up because I disagreed with him online. He said I wasn't black enough and he was going to have some of his African-American friends come beat me up to teach me a lesson. Matthew Burdick has accused me of being a member of a pedophile ring. Matthew Burdick randomly found me online and relentlessly harassed me. He contacted my girlfriend and harassed her. Matthew Burdick contacted my employer and tried to get me fired. I told him not to contact me again and then uh, about a month ago he turned up on my personal Facebook page and started telling me that I was a fraud and he was going to do something physically harmful to me. Matthew Burdick terrorized me to the point where I went to my local police department for help. Matthew Burdick spent weeks trying to track me down, also that he could make my life a, quote, living hell, and also so that he could contact my employer to try and get me fired. Matthew Burdick threatened to shoot my band on stage while we were playing live. Matthew Burdick did contact one of my employers and tried to get me fired. Yeah, him saying, I'm going to kill you and your daughter. I'm sitting, I'm sitting there trying to figure out, one, well, I'm trying to figure out how he knows I got kids. Sally's page was created to highlight the issues facing cyberstalking victims when their uh, stalker lives in another country. Matthew Burdick attacked us both on that page in a comment section on a thread. He insulted us and he harassed and attacked us both. Matthew Burdick tried to get me fired at my college teaching job, twice. Matthew Burdick did on more than one occasion threaten to kick my ass. Matthew Burdick swatted my transitional housing facility. He started making videos about me, about how I'm corrupt, how I'm scamming people. Problem with it is, is when people Google my name, uh, they find these videos and they at least, some of them believe at least some of the things that Matthew say. In one of the thousands of email and Facebook messages Matthew Burdick sent to my personal and business accounts in 2018, he threatened to bludgeon me to death with a baseball bat. Matthew Burdick has accused me of being a racist. He's a stalker and he harasses people and he needs to be stopped. I did try at one point to have some kind of level-headed, uh, reasonable dialogue with Matthew Burdick uh, when he realised that he wasn't getting anywhere with Sally or myself. He called us both paedophiles. <sighs> the people in that movie are my friends. They're my neighbours. They're people in my community. That he harassed. And now Amazon Prime, my distributor, and all of these streaming companies have effectively silenced their voices. What these guys have actually supported is this guy. We're going to extend the, the protective order for two years. All right, and you'll have to reserve. How about you go fuck yourself? I figured that was coming. 
You have a great day. Yo, no. This hearing is over. Fuck yourself. Fuck yourself, you old fuck. This guy is so abusive, he will even make commentary about my mother right after she died. You know, something sad, I saw that Peter's mom died. Oh, I've credited Social Media Monster to my mom. What a sick fuck. What a sick fuck. I am just beyond disappointed in Amazon, my former distributor, all these companies that caved to this guy. Why they would give in to a cyber terrorist demands is not something I will ever understand. These companies silence the voice of the victims. The guy they actually want to support has all of these restraining orders in effect against him. And so there's no victims. And that's my only response. There is zero victims. None. Matthew Burdick physically assaulted me. He called me degrading names and used threats of violence and self-harm to get his way. He lied more times than I can count. I got away from him, but he continued to stalk me. He made me fear for my life, which is why I will not be appearing in this video. Matthew does not get to decide whether or not they feel like victims. That's up to them, not him. Many of these people became victims and targeted solely because they supported the documentary. After having Peter John Ross on my podcast, Matthew Burdick sent me relentlessly hundreds of messages to several of my Facebook profiles and also threatened to make a documentary about my life and all the supposed bad things I've done and then premiere it in my hometown to try to ruin my film career. Matthew Burdick threatened to destroy my life. He contacted my employers and accused me of being a pedophile. I interviewed Peter John Ross for a podcast. Matthew Burdick found out and started harassing me. He went to my school administration, threatened to get me expelled and started harassing the administration themselves calling my career services director a pedophile. After I shared the trailer for Social Media Monster, Matthew Burdick messaged me, threatening to F up my world unless I apologized. Despite removing the trailer, he continued to harass me and several colleagues, accusing me of spreading hate speech, being racist, and bullying one of the most powerful activists on the planet. Now Matthew is falsely accusing me of threatening his child. He has referred to me as a racist, a bigot, and a child abusing scumbag. He is also saying that I want him to commit suicide and then if I ignore him, he will come to my job and raise hell to ensure I can no longer ignore him. Matthew Burdick threatened to call CPS and file false allegations against me to have my children removed from my custody. When he did not get any response from me, he began bombarding me with emails and threatened to show up at my door where he will deal with me. To prove that he had my address, he included that in the email as well. Even after asking him to no longer contact me, he still continued to bombard me with emails, both from himself and from several aliases. After posting my review of Social Media Monster, I was contacted by Matty Burdick via Facebook, attacking Peter John Ross. He then told me I was liable for conspiring against a .org engaged in First Amendment activity uh, regardless of my location and sarcastically wished me luck with my life. Social Media Monster is not about Matthew Burdick. It was never about him. It's about us, the victims and targets of his abuse. It's our story, not his. It is too important to me to tell the victim stories and to get their stories out there regardless of what Matthew Burdick does and says. Telling the victim stories is why I can't stop making the documentary. This is why I can't quit the film. Their stories need to be heard.